Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Pro and Expert Division of the new course called Old Bridge Park here in Golf Clash the game. We are preparing for the Spring Major Tournament that's going to be super exciting because a Major is just exciting itself but now with a new course as well it's going to add an element of extra excitement and also add an extra toughness towards it. And in this playthrough you will see me playing all the nine holes and even though I might have club a club level on my club have a level of my clubs that I'm playing with that you might not have. Have in mind though that I'm adapting my spins, my adjustment and everything with my setup to even be possible to play with way lower clubs than what I'm having. I'm also explaining that with my voice so make sure to listen to what I'm explaining in this video here and obviously if you do have any questions you can always use the comment section below or send in an email to support at golfclashtommy.com. Hit the thumbs up button, that means a lot to me if you can do that. Also subscribe to the channel and then turn on the notification. That helps a lot doing any of these three and obviously doing all three of them. If you're looking to get the best guides on the market for Pro, Expert and Master, adapted for low and high level clubs, you go to patreon.com slash golfclashtommy and sign up and get yourself a package. In that case you will have a massive advantage over your opponents that do not have our guides. Uh, in the upcoming spring major tournament. We do have uh, the info box on the right hand side to give you the club distance adjustment, elevation adjustment, also what ball and club type I suggest you to play with. Have in mind that those are all suggestions and you don't have to follow it if you don't want to but there is always a plan behind it. So let's go to hole number one. So we're gonna start off with a drive here and now we obviously do want to have a tailwind. If we do have a tailwind, um, when it comes to uh, playing this drive, we do want to bounce uh, either before the rough in the sand that is in the center or we, sorry, the, the sand that is in the center or we're going to play directly over the sand if we do have a power fireball. Now the wind is very low, so I'm judging this to be impossible to bounce over even with a power fireball not to bounce over but to go directly over so I'm choosing a bounce over instead max plus 10 using uh, 6 bars of top spin and 2 bars of right spin I'm using the club that gives me the most power and I want to really stress the fact that you shouldn't focus on my club level because this is a play that is adapted for lower level clubs so I'm using stats that is available on lower level clubs just that I play with a little higher level than what I maybe should. Max plus 10, get the ball down there. Now for the second shot, we are going to do a max backspin shot and trying to go for the very beginning of the green because what you cannot see here in this view is that if you're trying to bounce over the bunker, it's first a massive upslope and then it's a downslope after that. So it's going to be an extremely difficult time for you to get that one consistent. You can't use the left side of the green because there is no funnel, there is no roll down towards the pin for a possibility of um, um, of an eagle from there either. So you're left to go for either a dunk or you are left to go for a backspin shot like this. And you can see here bouncing on the fringe and we're having the max backspin on the thorn to just fall down right at pin for a beautiful eagle on a tough par 4. And that's the way, in my opinion, that this hole should be attacked. And that leaves also towards, if you do have a headwind of T, I would definitely recommend to use uh, the best power ball you have and to just get the ball as far down possible and then the extra power will still allow you to go with a short iron and attack with backspin. And if you cannot go for uh, a short iron backspin shot, it's going to be a long iron backspin shot and then I do strongly recommend to use the Saturn or to use the Tsunami to do the same type of play that we are doing here with the Thorn, to use the backspin and to have to up and having us to avoid the bouncing in the downhill slope or in the uphill slope for that matter again we're starting off with a very tough par 4 of the old bridge park and this is not going to be a par 4 where we will see that many eagles So let's take a look at hole number two here and hole number two is going to be an interesting one because the green is very difficult 
to handle. But I found a very nice spot here and an absolute massive funnel. Look at that spot by playing into the rough there. I can wiggle left and right and ball guideline will not move. When it is headwind, I'm making sure that I'm having the ball guideline to go past the pin just slightly. If we do have a crosswind, I would have the ball guideline to the hole. And if we do have a tailwind, I would leave the ball guideline short. The important part here is to try to have the ball to enter the green as as far left possible because the more right we do have the ball guideline the more it will fall and then the more speed it will have and then it will be more or less impossible for the ball to stop and it will most likely roll over the cup or hit the pin and bounce out but finding this spot here to aim with a three left spin and a little bit of top spin in this instance in headwind we're bouncing onto the rough and we're rolling just into the green there and it falls down with a proper speed to let the ball uh, not have too much speed and it drops for a lovely hole in one. This hole is very exciting to me because it's all about the position. Obviously the adjustment is a valuable thing to have in mind for sure, but it's all about the position if you're gonna drop this one consistently. And so we go with a medium distance with a 20% elevation here from the second tee. And I'm using a quarterback and using the ball that gives me the most wind resistance possible. And you could see on my first bounce, I ended up to bounce in the center of the rough, even though I aimed more to the left. So have that in mind so you're not going to be afraid of missing the rough. But if you are, then my other recommendation is to use a lot of backspin, land it on green, let the slope take the ball down towards the pin and hope for a hole in one. But if you're pushing for a hole in one in a consistent way, this is the way to play. So we're gonna start off with the drive. Now we do have headwind and I got headwind and headwind and headwind and headwind in practice. So eventually I just had to find a way to actually play a way that gives us a chance for an albatross. A three top spin, two left spin. I'm aiming for the left side of this fairway island. And even though it looks scary, it isn't as scary as it looks because we do have a lot of room on this uh, far away here the goal here is to bounce on it over to the next far away and kind of take a little shortcut to be closer towards the pin and open up for an albatross if you do have a wind that doesn't allow you to go to the pad uh, like for an example if you have very low level clubs or you don't have an apocalypse to be able to be used then you're going to have to lay up on the left what happens then is that you're forfeiting any type of chances for an albatross as you're going to only have to play yourself up to the green for a putt or you're going to have to just lay up for a wedge and take the wedge for the third shot to secure the eagle. I'm playing with a power fireball to ensure that I'm having distance in headwind. I'm playing with apocalypse because I do want to have the max curl to the left and using again three top spin, two left spin which is stats that other apocalypse level clubs has as well in obviously in a crosswind or in a tailwind we don't need to play with a power fireball if we don't want to but at least we don't need to use overpower when it comes to that type of play either now for the second shot you play with your long iron that gives you the best accuracy and ball guideline possible it's going to be the b52 or it's going to be a grizzly as it is a rough bump it doesn't really matter if you have a low level uh, grizzly or low level b52 because the ball guideline will still be shown so now when having a direct headwind, I'm aiming with the ball guideline to be just right side of the pin. 2.1 top spin and two right spin. And you can see that the ball guideline going, going approximately two green squares past the pin. This is to compensate for the compressed ball guideline. Now for the plus six pin check, I'm using just 50% slider with a 10% elevation P5 numbers. Obviously that adjustment will differ depending on what wind direction you have on the second shot. But at least for this angle, that's the adjustment that I'm using in the video. Perfect ball. And we're going to bounce into the rough and we roll up and getting ourselves a nice little uh, albatross it is here on hole number three. One thing to have, as, have in mind as well is that you have probably noticed that the green slopes massively down. And then obviously the concern would be, okay, what happens if I'm making a mistake and ending up on green? Will I, will I be on green for an impossible pop? No, you won't be because the ball will always fall down. I tested out that just because I wanted to be able to answer that question. So 
we're going to play this one with a navigator here and we're gonna play an aggressive rough bump you may be wondering why and the reason why is because it gives us the best possible way of getting an hole in one if you're not interested in taking the risk that comes with doing a rough bump like this then i would strongly advise you to play on the fairway before and bounce over to the pin you can use the left side of the green to have the ball to take this roll towards the pin it's not gonna be even remotely close to us con consistent to get an hole in one as the rough bump will be when we do have a win coming left to right it's important to leave uh, your uh, target short shorter than what you are estimated to bounce on or where you wanted to bounce on and the reason for that is that we are adjusting from a lower to a higher point if we do have a win coming right to left we're adjusting from a higher to a lower point and in that case we're going to have to move our target further up than what we want where we want the ball to bounce and the reason for that is otherwise we will fall short bounce into the rough and we take that little nice groove that is there i don't know if we can call it a funnel but there's definitely a noticeable sticky spot that we try to play into that the spins will vary depending on wind angle but when it comes to this slight tailwind that we're having here i'm leaving the ball guideline slightly short and slightly right as well to make sure that i'm getting uh, the right path towards the pin again you don't have to play a rough bump if you don't want to then you can play a more conservative way as said in the beginning and use the left side of the green to have the ball roll down and you're gonna always have a safe and simple birdie medium distance with a 20% elevation and I'm using a navigator ball here but using a ball with more wind resistance isn't anything bad so hole number five is a very interesting par five in my opinion here I would strongly recommend to use a power three ball as per minimum a power five ball is not wrong uh, because it will give you obviously more power 5.8 top spin and one left spin which is um sorry three left spin obviously not one three left spin 5.8 top spin which is a top spin amount you can even get on the lower level type of apocalypse and you can also get that on the, um, the extra mile level eight and you can also get that on a low level thor hammer so use the driver can give you that top spin amount the power in itself is not really that super important Max plus 10 is what I'm using, a little bit of overpower because I did adjust into overpower. And now the goal is to do a first bounce on the fairway, second bounce on the fairway into the rough to roll out like that. And the reason we want to do that is to open up a chance for us to uh, give ourselves a chance for the albatross. If we do have a direct headwind and don't want to take the risk of going with a lot of overpower, then try to just bounce yourself over to the first island instead. That will ensure a way for you to secure the eagle, whereof the albatross attempt will somewhat be forfeited. Now, second shot, now you can do a decision here. Either you use a sniper or any other wood club with a good ball guideline to bounce on the fairway or you do like what I'm doing here and the reason I'm doing for going a rough bump here is because there is a lot of rough I have a lot of room for error so I can use here the cataclysm I can use the horizon depending on what club I have in the highest level of them too now I'm playing at the complete max line which is maximum distance minus 10 percent power three numbers and making sure that the ball guideline going slightly through the hole and the reason for that is that we are adjusting from a higher to a slightly lower point and need to compensate in that way again this is maybe a little bit more aggressive way of attacking the pin as it would have been if we are bouncing on the fairway but i'm all for looking for the more consistent ways of attacking the pin for an albatross in this instance and i do believe that the rough bump as per limiting and the effect after the first bounce is definitely going to be the way to attack this hole in my opinion so good chance in my opinion here on hole five if the wind is somewhat okay from t if it is a direct head wind i see this to be an eagle only par five but other than that you will probably see some par uh, some albatross drops from your on your opponent's scorecard and hopefully your own Hole number six. Honestly, though, this is probably one of the tougher par fours that we do have in the game. And the reason for that is not that it's a funny looking course or whatever. It's because it's so long and you have like so much water and you can't get yourself over the water 
regardless what top spin boost you're use top spin boost ball you're using so either you lay up on the right or you lay up on the left when it comes to uh, laying up um i do prefer the left side because it gives you a a simpler way to in somewhat attack the pin for an eagle if the wind allows on the second shot because on the right side we do have a bunch of trees that is in your face and if you're not far up enough like meaning very close to the rough line then you will have the trees in your face and that's not going to be a possibility to get around if you don't have a lot of side spin and then we come to the different problem that we don't have a lot of side spin on power five balls nowadays or not nowadays but we do have max side spin three and that side spin three is going to be a massive stretch if you're not very close to the rough line so medium distance plus 10 i'm using 5.8 top spin to right spin just to adapt for lower level apocalypse clubs as well i'm using a decent amount of curl which is approximately 1.8 to 2 balls of curl to the right and the goal is to get the ball as far down the fairway possible. Unfortunately, I do hit a great left. The perfect would have been better than I would have been closer. But now we do have an open shot. We can decide here. Either we use the rough bump to just bounce ourselves down to the green to take a simple birdie. Or we are going to try our best to attack the pin and with a rough bump, giving ourselves a chance for the eagle. Because you see the... the the bunkers there those bunkers is definitely there to even make to make it even more difficult for us because let's let's pretend like this that we do have wind coming right to left of t right if we do have that then we do have a direct headwind in the, yeah we'd have a headwind in our face on the second shot and then we're going to have to use the fairway pad that is before all this big rough and try to bounce the ball to green but then the problem is that we're going to have to have our second bounce very close to one of the two bunkers on our side and that's going to be a difficult thing as well and then we all all of a sudden are kind of flirting with not even getting a birdie so i'm adjusting max minus 10 percent i'm uh, using a little bit of overpower as i needed that little overpower to actually land to where i wanted to be a perfect ball would have been close but i would say that this par four is definitely going to be if not the toughest yeah i would say to get it with hole number nine is going to definitely be the toughest hole to drop of the old bridge park um in the tournament or in tour play for that matter hole number seven is a long par three and here again we're gonna go for a rough bump when it comes to having a crosswind or a tailwind i would recommend to go with the quarterback and still go for this rough bump here where we are attacking the pin dead on and as always when i'm making hole guides and playthroughs i wanted to give us the best possible chance for a drop and as the fairway on the left is very uneven so to speak it's going to give you a very difficult time to attack the pin in a positive way so that's why i'm using the rough bump further up to really do attack for a chance for an hole in one if you do have a headwind i strongly recommend to play with the rock to give you more power so you don't go in between clubs definitely using a kingmaker here to reduce the wind as much as i possible can adjustment max a plus 15. you can see that our ball bounces into the rough and it bounces on the fringe down towards the pin and we're very close on dropping this one for an hole in one obviously the adjustment could differ depending on what type of wind direction you have the spins could differ depending on what wind direction you have and stuff like that is something you need to have in mind but i do believe that this spot here for that rough on top there is going to be a very good and nice way to attack the pin for an hole in one whereof if you feel uncertain about that type of play where you don't maybe want to take any risk at all then use the fairway on the left use all the right spin you can to bounce on the fairway up towards the green and have a semi long pot for an hole in one i would say sorry not hole in one for a birdie and hole in one however bouncing on the fairway won't really be a realistic outcome in my opinion it's going to be more due to the down to the luck as all the bumpiness on that uh, that fairway on the left so hole number eight i would say is a nice little breather because this is i would say probably the easiest of the holes that we're going to play of the old bridge park and three left spin and 5.8 top spin i'm adapting this play to be able to be played with lower level driver you don't have to play with an apocalypse because we're not dependent on playing with curl so either extra mile um 
Extra Mile, Thor's Hammer, or Apocalypse in that matter will uh, be sufficient. So, max plus 10. And now I'm unfortunately hitting a great ball. However, though, a great ball or perfect doesn't really matter. We are looking for the outcome where the ball is going to roll out like this. This massive little glitch is honestly what we're looking for. Obviously, maybe not that far that we're getting there. That may be a little bit too close to the rough. However, though, that is the the idea with the play to have a more open shot towards the pin however though i do have a backup plan from my opponent that was a nice one we're going to take a look at as well after this shot so to try to play this shot on a flat fairway i'm going to use two left spin to avoid that slide downhill uh, downhill fairway that is a little bit more to the left now, as it is headwind, I will leave the ball guideline slightly through the hole. Playing with the B52 level 7 plus or Grizzly level 7 plus is strongly recommended. And the reason for that is it's good ball guidelines. So you can definitely aim at the pin in a positive way. 10% elevation and true club distance. Unfortunately, I slightly under, under adjust this one with approximately 0 0.2, 0 0.3 um, rings. But at least you do have the ID here to as displayed. And I would consider this one to most definitely be one of, if not the best chance here for a drop of the Old Bridge Park. And then it becomes a little silly that I'm not dropping it then. But at least based on a simple drive and then an open shot with a flat green, that definitely is going to be a good chance for everyone to make a drop. So now we're going to take a look at our opponent's shot, which I think is interesting because that is with a drive that was shorter than what... Um, uh, I were playing which obviously becomes uh, a different play which it becomes a sniper play and uh, then we're going to just change everything and we're gonna open up uh, that shot and take a look at that too so we do have here we do have our opponent shot you can see that it's a katana and it's going to be uh, on sniper minimum distance play here or at least it's going to be uh, close to minimum distance play so it's going to be somewhere between minimum and medium distance in terms of uh, the position afterwards here. Using slightly more than five backspin, a little bit of right spin, ball guideline to go through the hole uh, just to compensate for the compressed ball guideline. Then 10% elevation, true club distance number, again, is going to be somewhere between minimum and medium distance um, in a situation like this. And I think this is a very nice and smart backup to have if we're having a short drive and not really reaching when it comes to uh, the... Um, long iron obviously our opponent is very lucky here with a great right dropping it dead center so obviously the setup needed to be a little bit different than what our opponent did but i would strongly recommend after watching this a couple of times to keep the 10 percent elevation and just adjust and center the ball properly and then you're gonna be fine but again it's like a backup play for the long iron the long iron is definitely the most recommended one here on hole number eight with the sniper as a second uh, or as a So, as mentioned, hole number 9 is going to be a very tough par 5. And the thing is that the reason it's going to be so tough is due to all the freaking water that we do have on the left there. So, you can either try to just roll up on the right side. But the problem with that is that you won't be having the power enough to actually get yourself a uh, eagle. You're going to have to then play... Um, a layup again to then go for the third shot towards the pin instead so what i decide to do here is to play a little bit of an aggressive drive in terms of that sure i could go into the rough i could go into the sand but if executed in a decent way i will be on the fairway on that fairway island and in that case i will reach and get myself an eagle and just be done with it Max plus 10 is the adjustment that I'm using. I'm using a little bit of overpower here in headwind just to compensate. Looking at to where my ball land and how the outcome becomes, then, you know, it wasn't really needed. But bouncing on the fairway into the rough to roll out on this fairway island. And now, you can see here now, as we're not playing a linear hole, obviously being more left is going to be better. But I can still not go with the tree. So I'm going to have to find a way of playing. And I'm going to play that on the left side of the trees. I'm ending up to use one top spin in the end, which is maybe a little bit too little. Um, and But in the end, the idea here with this shot is to get myself down towards the green. 
or to be on the fringe to just lock in the eagle here on this very tough par 5. The albatross is, is going to be gone, in my opinion. I don't think we will see any albatrosses here. Obviously, I would love to be proven uh, different, but, you know, the goal here, again, is to get the ball to approximately where we are now, maybe on the green as ultimate, and you can see here this is a short wedge, and we do have an eagle. But again, if you do not have the possibility to, to end up on that island, you're going to have to lay up on the right, you can't play the shot that I'm doing there. So you're going to have to then lay up a second time and then go with a short iron to pin for the third shot to lock in the eagle, which is not that easy either. I would, however, do... If I would be making a change to the video I'm having here, it would be to change to a power five ball. Because playing with a power five ball will ensure that on the second shot, if I do make the shot over to island in a positive way, I can definitely use the power five ball then to not maybe have to go with max overpower if I do have a straight headwind, and that will be very helpful. So, hole number nine for you all, the toughest of the old bridge park. I would say, I would say that I do think we will see a lot of birdies on uh, people's scorecard on this one in the tournament. Thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough from second tee of the old bridge park, a new course in Golf Clash for the Spring Major Tournament. I'm super excited to dig into this one in the when the tournament starts and I have a pleasure playing these very tough holes uh, in regular practice mode and I would say that the toughness of this course is really what's going to show in the tournament that even if the wind is positive for us uh, on the specific holes we are still going to struggle drop dropping them consistently but that's what I'm good at and that's what I enjoy to really find ways that brings a bit more consistency on already inconsistent and tough Holes, such as uh, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's part threes, part fours, and part fives. I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. And once again, have in mind that I'm playing with uh, clubs that you might not have the level for. Have in mind though that I always explain and always adapt my uh, adjustments and my spin suggestions, landing positions to be adapted to those of you that also have lower level clubs. That's very important. So just don't steer yourself blind on the club level. Get the ultimate tournament guides, the by far best guides on the market for pro, expert and master. You do have the link directly in the description down below. Thank you once again for spending the time watching this playthrough and don't forget to hit the thumbs up on your way out. Good luck in your Gold Clash game.